Hi everyone and welcome to episode 248 of Mighty White's podcast. I'm Jack, as always, John back here, see? Hello. How's things, mate? Yeah, not bad, thanks. How are you? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, finally recovered. Uh, there's, there hasn't been a pop. We haven't done one for two weeks and it's basically my fault. My job revolves around tennis. It's the Australian Open. You can imagine the sort of hours I've been doing. Um, but oh, I'm glad you're taking the credit for this one. Well, I mean, it, it's my fault. <laughs> There was one day that we were going to do a podcast and I ended up sleeping about 14 hours. So, Lazy uh, bastard. Yeah, must have been knackered. But I was at least up for all of the Leeds games. We'll briefly talk about the game from Sunday, just because we didn't do one in between. Uh, Leeds 2, Preston 1, which sounds way less stressful than it was. Yeah, it was um, yeah, a very, very frustrating game, obviously going... 1-0 down inside the first few minutes. Fairly quick equaliser. And then for a portion of the game, and a decent portion of the game, you you said you'd say Preston have done a done a job there. And then it went from doing a job to assassination. Yeah, it, it did turn at one but there was, you know, oh they're well organized, they're in the game, they're playing, they're doing a solid job, and it did turn into we're struggling a bit here. Let's just start hoofing the fuck out of everyone. Mm. Uh, I can't remember where I read it, so I unfortunately can't give credit. It was probably Andrew Dalton. It's That's who it normally is. Him or Chris Taylor at LUFC uh, that beat Across the two games against Preston, it is the most one side has fouled the other. Actually, it might have been Johnny Cooper. But the, the, the most one side has fouled the other across two games in the championship, basically, since we started tracking it. Uh, they just started hoofing us up in the air. But yeah, the um, that first goal was pretty dreadful defending. It was just dreadful all over. I mean, Bamford gives it away in a bad area, which leads to Roden getting caught alongside, who fouls him and probably should have got booked, to be honest. They cross it in. Free header falls to Liam Miller, who's free in the box, who drives it across to Will Keane, who's free in the middle of the box, five yards out. There's no marking, no nothing. But the Dan James equaliser from Fur, from Fur Post Cross, it's a good header, but it's a brilliant cross from uh from Furpo. And yeah, just after that it was very frustrating. And I have to admit I didn't think the goal was coming. Yeah, there was there was there was a couple of chances, but um nothing no no great no particularly great chances. Yeah. Um I think as well that there's probably what the the Dan James Chip, chip attempt is is probably, um, I, I, I won't say the best best attempt, but it was kind of the the one that got everyone on their feet. Obviously, when yeah. he he went for the lob, I mean, I do think that he actually chipped that perfectly on any other day because the wind that day was that strong and it was behind him. I think that's what took it over. I think without that, it's well judged and it goes in. But Dan James had a very good game. Uh, then later on, uh, a bit of a scramble after a set piece ball comes into the box and ryan ledson has his arms completely by his sides according to him but it was actually it's literally a perpendicular angle to his body stuck it, out it's the most it's as blatant a handball as you're ever going to see unless you're ryan low it's um it's a shame that there wasn't a microphone nearby because i'm pretty sure if there would have been when that when that ball came off his arm you'd have heard him go ah! Because yeah. the way he just lifts, it, it hits his arm and you just see him go, no, yeah, just, no, no, no. We've all done this playing football. We've all seen, even at the very level, we've seen players do it. He misjudged the bounce and just for half a second he panicked. And that's all it takes. And he just, it's a blatant handball. Uh, Patrick Bamford disguised to scare the shit out of not only Ellen Road, but the Leeds population at large, as we've seen from that video from Tokyo. Uh uh, by holding the ball by the penalty spot. For when when he first picked it up, everyone went, nah, he's doing that thing, he's gonna hand it off to Pirot. And it just went long enough that everyone started to get scared. The uh the third biggest cheer on the day, I think, was when uh Pat Bamford passed that ball to Joel Pirot. Yeah. Bamford's been Bamford's been really good since he came back in the side, but I'm never trusting him on a penalty ever again in my life. But Joel Brood steps up, puts keep it long way, wins it in the last minute. At least it should be the last minute because it was the ninety fourth minute. But I believe they've been played about another seven. There, there was a lot went on. To be fair, yeah, you, you'd have to say. 
Um, similar to how the game finished Wednesday night as well. Um, yeah, because I think we had a good two, three minutes celebrating the goal. Yeah. Um, so and then surprising. we made two subs not long after. Yeah, very. Did, did some of the, uh, and again, in same in the Norwich game, two of the most cynical and petty substitutions I think I've ever seen. Yeah. Is that like? Well, I mean, actually, did get injured, but that only meant he went off because it would have been some of otherwise. <laughs> it was, it was the fact we waited to bring Liam Cooper on after that. Should we make a double sub? No, no, no. We Two can we can spread these out. <laughs> yeah, um, but that was a really good win against Preston. Obviously, if it gets to the last minute and you drag one out, it's great. And then on Wednesday night, followed it up with a win and a clean sheet against Norwich. Um, first half, I just thought we were the better side, but not by streets. We were just a bit better. Um, there was, the goal itself was good. Dan James, really good cross. Bamford, really good header at the far post. And then Leeds were sort of on top, but without being properly dominant. And then right on the stroke of our time, Gabriel Sarah missed an absolute sitter for them at the far post. So, so far, so good. But the second half was the weird thing uh, in the ground. Because Norwich had the ball for roughly the first hour and a half of the first 20 minutes. <laughs> but they honestly, like to the extent that I nearly got my phone out to tweet something because they're like, well, no, it's going to happen. They're just going to have the ball. Just to like tweet, they should throw another ball on the pitch for Leeds to play. Center with. passes to left, passes to center, holds it. Holds it. Um, but it's, they had all got the crowd were getting really frustrated and. Everyone was getting really nervous. And it's only when it finished that you looked back at it and went, they didn't create a single goddamn thing in that second half. I believe I read afterwards their XG in the second half, now which is, was 0.03. Like, so we were all nervous as hell because we're used to having the ball. But actually, you'd have to say that tactically, Farker was probably right to just set off and kind of let them have it a bit. Well, one of the one of the things. So I, you know, for transparency, uh, did not see the first half. I was playing football, uh, but I was kind of caught up with the second half. And obviously, yeah, they had, they had possession for long periods without ever really doing anything with it. And then when they attempted to push further up, they got quite sloppy with possession. So there was, there was a lot of misplaced passes out of defence that we were we were able to pick off, you know, 30, 40 yards from goal. Um, and, and the, really, the, the, you know, for the, for the time I was I was back watching it, they only really had one chance and, and they didn't even get the shot away in that. Yeah, that's where they had that break at the end and they got it out to um, Adam Ida on the left side and actually Gray made a really good tackle. I I looked at that and went, there is a striker lacking confidence in himself because he, he got that in a lot of space. Yeah. Well, I mean, he it... all sorts of panics. I think it was the same round of subs, but like that's one of the, I was so shocked when they took that John Rowe off because he he'd, was the... the he'd been down with an injury, hadn't he? I think not mm. long before, if I remember you'd, rightly. You'd think it must be that because he'd looked their biggest threat by a distance. But yeah, in the end, even though we Leeds didn't have loads of a ball in the second half, they created nothing, and we sort of we did have like three or four decent, pretty good chances in the. In the second half, like there was one where like Jaden Anthony had a really good chance that he didn't get the shot away for. There was a good cross to Bamford where he sort of fluffed his lines. There was one that he sliced wide, but it was quite difficult. But one where he missed it basically completely. Thurpo had a decent one. Some of the lad one from Edge at Box where he basically just passed it to the keeper. We we so in the it, although it was stressful to watch, I bet a neutral watching that game thought that looked quite comfortable. Yeah. Um yeah, I think if you're Norwich, you'd be, you'd be very disappointed from that second half to have not even carved out a a good shot on goal. Um, yeah. Again, like I say, it was, it was quite nice just to see Jorginho again just picking off passes. and he, he seems to be in the habit now of the ball being mere millimetres from going out of play and his leg like Carlton Palmer just extends out <laughs> and just knocks it 10 yards ahead for him to keep it in play. And 
he just seems he shrugs off defending. He, he had one on the opposite side, um, probably I think it was in stoppage time when he he ends up turning and he, he I think he is it goes for the nutmeg and, and pulls it back to to Glenn Kamara, but he's just absolutely I don't know who the defender was, but he just puts him on the floor. Yeah. Just going shoulder to shoulder. You know, like I I can't believe you have this in you. Because you, you turn around with this coy smile on your face after you do these things. He is the personification of joy when yeah. he plays football. But more importantly, I want you to I want everyone out there to remember that that KC just compared just made a comparison between Jorginho Rutte and Carlton Palmer. They 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 when yeah. <laughs> I bet I, that doesn't happen often. Listen, listen, all I'm saying is if if uh, Jorginho Rutte is in the England team in the early 90s, I think we make it to USA 94. Yeah, fair. Um, and I know there's yeah. complications about around that, you know, his age and nationality. But apart from that... <laughs> yeah. You're just not you're just not thinking laterally enough. Yeah. Um, obviously, I love watching Jor- Jorginho in every game. This was no different. He, although, I have to admit, against Norwich, he did overdo it a bit. <laughs> like he really it was there was some losses of possession in areas where you're like, oh, if this is a an opposition that's a step up from Norwich, these would be a bit of a problem. He did kind of overdo it in that game. Um I, so both of those two games was a few takeaways. I thought Joe Roden was excellent in both. Um Ampadu was good at the back. But the one that everyone's talking about, and rightly so, is Junior Furpo. Yep. He he is is a fantastic left back. Is this both, enough? Both, game? both defensively and going forward. <laughs> um, and I'd like to put on the record that I I've always thought that. Yeah, we've never doubted him. No. Uh, but yeah, he's it's, been he's, he's been excellent. Just by the way, continue. the uh, the premonition is uh, halfway coming true as we creep towards. The transfer deadline that leads, who seems to be no closer to signing a fullback, maybe a fullback down in Archie Gray. And mm. uh, it was foretold that on the 2nd of February, Junior Furpo will get injured. Yep. That's what we were expecting. Uh, but yeah, he's been brilliant and I'm so happy to do it. It was um, obviously he's given an interview saying how, like, He's basically as happy as he's ever been. And I think it's because it must be such a relief to him as well that he's played well. But the tweet that I'd like to see was, uh, you know, uh, Tariq Panja, who writes for, like, the New York Times? Like, a lot of it is sports and finance stuff that he does. But he said, I saw Junior Furbo trending and I was worried again. And then it turns out that it's because he's playing really well and I'm so happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it's not just in Leeds. It's gone all over that Junior Furbo has been how he's been then injured all the time. So, like, people are all delighted for him to be playing well. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean... The other one as well, who probably deserves a mention from the last two. Yeah, he's he's looking good. And and, and again, I think he, he's probably going to be unfortunate once Shrouk is fit again, because I don't really see it working with, with him and Ampadu together. Um as, as much as I'd like to, but Am, Ampadu is playing regardless. Yeah. And he, he seems to really like Glenn Kamara as, as the eight in this team. Um, but but these these last few weeks, he's he's done himself the world of good in, the, in these performances. And I'm, and I'm glad he's been given that chance to, to shine because I think otherwise you'd just be looking at the Stoke game and things like that where... Or the, the you know the odd twenty minutes here and there where he's played and, and not really had a chance to get into it. Um, he's he's actually showed d- genuine quality, which which to be fair, when you you know for someone we've paid what was it about five million or so for, I, the, I, if I remember rightly, they reckon it was something like that. You know, it's it, in the championship. You you're spending five million on a player who's going to play for you. Um. You know, so for him to come in for that and, and not be starting must have been quite difficult. But you know, he's 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 waited for his opportunity and, and he's definitely taken it. Yeah, he definitely because he hasn't just it isn't just always been better since he got the start. It's been it's he's like actually looked 
a real versatile quality player that really knows what he's doing. Like the the second half, particularly of the game against um, Norwich, we were basically in a back three for most of that, where Gluev was in the middle, Ampadu left, road and right. And he just looked so comfortable being the first receiver and just picking the ball up and spreading the play. It gave, gave giving me dad a bit of a heart attack at times by just delaying for a sec. One of them where he feels he has plenty of time, but you don't necessarily feel it with you in motion going. But yeah, it's been um it's been really good to see him come in and do so well. Um so yeah, two two wins out of two, and that's Again, one of them where I can't remember where I read it, but I think it's the first time we've ever won our first five games of a year. Uh, yes, I believe that was Andrew Dalton. With uh, yeah, if I don't know, I it, just assume it was stats. Which is which is one of those <laughs> uh, those stats that you read in like it's kind of impressive. It it's totally meaningless, really. The, the, the winning five games at an arbitrary point yes. in the season. But, Five in a row in November is as valuable as in general. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's also just hard, quite hard to believe that's the only time that's happened. Um, it, it was it was interesting as I saw the other day, and it was it just took the top three in terms of their form. Um, and it, from I think it's from like the last five games that Southampton had, had picked up thirteen points. Uh, Leicester had picked up seven and Ipswich six, or something like that. So it's, and and it only showed those as, as as they were the top, you know, as they were the top three at that point. I feel like Leicester uh, must have got more than that. <laughs> it's, I think it's from the last five. That could, I don't know if that includes. Oh, FA, they did the have FA. I know it's totally good points. So, yeah. um, but yeah, well, you factor that way. We're only a point behind. Southampton in that regard, because yeah, well, we've won we're, every we're, game since since Preston away. Yeah, I mean, right now we're one behind, and, and just overall we're one behind Southampton, two behind Ipswich. I am worrying about Leicester, but uh, obviously they do both have a game in hand. But I think it was a good sign for Leeds that we, when we had to reorganise this game because of the FA Cup, that we didn't like push it back like others. I were like, no, no, bring it forward, we'll play it. Oh, p- apologies, it was a. Uh, it's eight points in five from Leicester and seven from Ipswich. All right, cool. I was a point out on each. Um, but yeah, you know, Leicester won, but Leicester had to drop some points eventually. And I know they've got quite a few players away at the at the Afcon at the moment as well, so it might be. Oh, sp- it, speaking it, of that, indeed, there's a story that I saw earlier today. Indeed, he's out for like three months. And yeah, um, so. he is like one player this season where their record noticeably changes with and without him. Hmm. It's uh, it's interesting when you look at the top four because Ipswich have only won one in five. Southampton won, you know, of uh, uh, one four drawn one, and then we've won four lost one. Um, quite far behind. Coventry also seems to be coming good. Um. Yeah. But it's it's good, you know, after that run, and you know, there, there was there was points after that Preston game, um, where where you kind of saw the typical um, extreme views of oh, I don't think Farker's got this, you know, we need we need someone else, and and it turns out now we're, we're better off this season than we were at the same time under Bielsa during the promotion season, which which really shows how okay. well we're better off in terms of points. I yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't mean mentally and as people. Um, well, and also but, just as position. Um, <laughs> but it, it just shows how, how Leicester and Ipswich's first half of this season has really distorted our view on how we're doing this season. Yeah. That, that points-wise, we are, we are better off than we were then. And we were so negative about it. Um, the, the the positive you've got to say is that that Farker looked at it and and made the change, has brought Bamford in, and and it has absolutely worked. Yeah, and, and he has to stick with it. it was he, he scored in four out of his five games? Now. Yeah. Um, Which, so for, you know, you know you're, for, you're never going to argue with that as a record from your number nine. No, and and 
you know, the, the, the talk of, of Bamford potentially leaving in January or certainly at the end of the season. And, and obviously a lot of that will depend on where we are and, and how we're feeling about him. But, you know, the, there was a lot of talk that, that Bamford was sort of done. And there was one of the games before where, was it the West Brom game where I think Joseph came on before, before Bamford him. did? I think it was West Brom. I can't actually remember for certain which game it was, but I remember it happening. Because I think I'd probably put on our Twitter like Joseph on first. That's interesting. Yeah, which which again very much felt a oh that's yeah it's an odd one, but um, you know he has at least shown that that he has the flexibility to go. No, this this needs changing. There is no point, you know, trying to persevere with this that that's that isn't working. Let's at least try something different and. And it and it has worked because I think even against Preston and, and uh, you know I know Bamford's shit and he didn't score in that game because yeah. you know, that's that's the but I think we we said it a few times in in the run in um, last season even when we were getting relegated we we looked a lot better for having Bamford up there leading the line even if he's not scoring goals like the the organisation is a lot better. Mm. Um, He's he's very good at what he does, um, and it and it just isn't Joel Peru's strength. No, and it'll be interesting to see what happens with Peru because he's definitely still got a massive part to play in this season. I'm just not sure exactly how it's gonna. Last minute penalties. Well, if he gets eight of them, that'd do. Um, but like you said, Farker made the decision and it worked, and that's sort of a good way to transition into. He seems to be sticking to his guns with lots of things. You know, we've seen him basically. Basically, it sounds like he's sent Spence back because of this uh, bloody things. And um, we've saw him, seen him not pick Cresswell because he didn't think his attitude were right. But in the press conference today before the FA Cup game against Plymouth, he has said that Cresswell is back available and that they've had a talk and Cresswell wants to stay. And I will say that there is a little bit of my brain that thinks. Maybe we were looking at signing Ben Godfrey and now we're not. And now there's been a bit more flexibility involved. That's the cynical part of my brain. I have no idea if there's any truth in that. But what I'm actually what, what I'm hoping is that I'm completely wrong to have that cynical voice in my head and that it's just no fact stuck to his guns and then Cresswell's gone back and gone, you're right. And you go from there. Yeah, because I I, th- I think ultimately you looked at the Peterborough game and it, it, in a match where a lot of players were rotated, it it was, and while you've also got injuries, to then not have a centre back on the bench, hmm. and yet, a point, wasn't it? yeah, we and yet we didn't pick him. Um, you know, it, I, th- I think it spoke volumes about how Fark felt about him at, at that time, um, and like you say, you you really hope it's 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 given him. A, a bit of a wake up as to as to what he needed to do to get back in there. Yeah. Um, well, um, the the other news was obviously Archie Gray has hurt his knee. Uh, it, they don't know how long. It sounded like sounded like they're hoping it's not too long. Uh, Dan James has done his adductor. There's been a lot of them this year, haven't there? Yeah, they're fun. Um, yeah, uh, and he's out for a couple of weeks, and there's still no Strout for at least a couple more weeks. He's been having some injections, and we're still not sure when it'll be. But Willie Nonto is back fit, having not been in the squad for the last couple of games. And, so, and on the verge of signing a new contract by the yeah. sounds of things, which uh, which yeah, that, that was, came out I was of nowhere. Bring that up, which I didn't expect to read that. It's probably the second most surprising thing I've read in the last week. Hang on, I'm gonna guess the first one, and that is Ryan Edmondson's move to Central Coast Mariners. Yeah, I could not believe what I was reading. No, no did, um, didn't. No, didn't Jurgen Klopp, I'll, be honest, I'll be honest. The Jurgen Klopp news really caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was very odd. It, it, with Nonto, it was it was seen to me. It was looking at, as is kind of the, the theme of this this transfer window of uh, loan with a view to a permanent. Hmm. Um, because clearly we we'd held out for however much it was we were looking for in the summer, and then because of his actions and him not playing, I think we kind of had to lower that value. Somewhat, 
But but not if he's getting on a new deal, we don't. Yeah. Um, in fairness, what was his the official? I, I mean, by official line, we don't know. It wasn't like Leeds United says. But the thing that was being said to all the journalists was that Leeds were always open to tying him to a new improved deal, even though we've gone down. Like, yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, I suppose he still is. Um, if you if you are talking about this in in business terms, an asset with a lot of potential still. Hmm. You know, you you don't play as many games as, as he has for Italy at at that age without being some degree of good. Yeah, and um, I'm hoping that he's properly fit because I'd quite like him to start this game because he hasn't had many chances to. Um, obviously, it's the FA Cup. It will be a lot less stressful than the last couple of games because the truth is, as much as the FA Cup is the oldest competition in the world, and it's Summer, I would I would give many, many things to see Leeds United win it. I aren't gonna even start worrying about it unless we somehow fluke us way into like the quarters. And then I'll start thinking, oh well, let's see what can happen. Uh this one definitely was Andrew Dalton. It's Leeds' first Saturday 3 p.m. FA Cup game at Ellen Road since 1998. Wow. Uh <laughs> well, I believe it, I believe it was Grimsby from what he said. Um That's the main mad. thing. I- um, we was there midfield the last time I checked was JB and Forshaw, but JB won't be available. And truth be told, I don't know if Forshaw played in the third round for Norwich, so I don't know. Um, I haven't even really looked at the you know the Plymouth team coming into this. Uh, they've still got that. Um, it's Morgan Whitaker, isn't it, on the on the wing, and he's been really good. Your boy Barley Mumba at wing back. Love that lad. But I suppose the main thing when it's the FA Cup game is what side do you think Leeds will put out? And I'll I'll, I'll start at the back. Do you think he'll play class in for this? Um. No, I don't think he will. He's he's, he's typically stuck with Melier in the cup games, hasn't he? Um. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, to be fair, Klassen played against Peterborough, but he had to. There was no one else. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd be perfectly happy with him playing in it, and and I think with the way he played in in the games he was in, sure, I, I think you reward him for it. The, the, there is no need to play Melier in this game. Now that's the side I come down with when I was thinking about it earlier that I don't think he will, but I think Klassen did enough in those three games to sort of earn the right to get this one. You know, he's yeah. not going to play in the league, and that's fine and correct, but. I think he's probably earned that. Um, my number one priority for this game, and I don't know if he'll do it, but as well as he's been playing, Joe Roden needs a rest because he's finished nearly every game limping for about three weeks. Um, so if Cresswell is back in the good books and back available, I would be starting him at right centre back in this game. Um, the only thing is that I'm not sure. Which way we're going to do it? Because he always plays Ampadu. Um, so I wonder who's going to play where. Because the, the sort of notes I wrote down was to have Shackleton right back, Cresswell and Cooper at centre back, and then Byron play left back. And probably whether it's Byron or Thurpo, one gets an hour and one gets half an hour. Yeah, I. Yeah, I think Shackleton's in. Um. Yeah, or you could just half each for for Byron and Furpo. Yeah. I'm thinking. The real thing is, it depends what he wants to do in the midfield. Because, um, like, obviously, there's no grey for this game. Will it just be Kamara and Ampadu, or Kamara and Groove? Will Will he try the? Can look, let's see if we're gonna see if they can play together, it should probably be this game. But from I, the way they played, I don't think they can. <laughs> I, don't I, think I I think he sticks with Kamara and Grave. Um, in that case, man, I think Ampadu will play centre back because he doesn't rest Ampadu. Yeah. Um I mean the other thing is, is, is I know no 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 he's been playing well and he's played all these games, is that Grove has only really started these 
this last handful of games. Mm. Um, so his legs will be far fresher than, than most. Um, and then it will be Nonto and Anthony. Yeah. And... I, I, I was thinking the same. I, I, I've put Peru behind Bamford in my notes because I yeah, think it's, I think it's what he went probably with. do with a game off. It's what he did. It's what he did against uh, Peterborough, isn't it? That he had those yeah. two together. So but yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd quite like us to West Ham, Purdue, and Road, and I think they could probably do with it. And I mean, to be fair, you could because Liam obviously Liam Cooper's been on the bench. If he if he yeah. went with Cresswell and Cooper, I wouldn't be against it. No, I'd quite I'd quite like him to do that, but the more I'm thinking about it, the more I think that he will just stick with Camera and. Well, maybe not Cameron Groove. If, because it's three games in six days, I'm really not sure. I think it'll be Groove. Because the thing is, if you whoever you're moving in, whoever else you're moving in there is is going to be someone else that's been playing anyway. Yeah. Um. So you know, un- unless unless you consider that this has been a rest for Ampadu playing at centre back, playing at centre back because you're not really yeah. as much. So. Um. Yeah, I, th- I think the big thing that everyone is hoping for coming out of this game is not a draw. Lose it, yeah, fine. But... Win it, great. Don't don't draw. Come on. Yeah, really don't draw because we've already got Plymouth away at like half twelve, haven't we? In a couple of weeks, it's it's at five o'clock you, in the morning. You don't want on a Tuesday. One. Fucking idiots! Yeah. I really, it's I like know. it's the stupidest thing. Yeah, I I know. The FA Cup replays are great for the lowdown clubs, and I actually think that they should keep them for that reason. But in terms of selfishness, God, we don't want one. Can we just? They should, can there not just be a thing where if both teams agree they don't want to replay, they can just play extra time and penalties? Yeah, <laughs> or just penalties, <laughs> and we definitely lose them. Um, so yeah, that it'll be a decent a, a decent amount of rotation. But I still, like, you would think that they will probably take it a bit more seriously than we do. Hmm. Because, I mean, they're, I mean, where are they now? It's 15th. But that is 15th where you're the nine points clear of any of the danger. So I think that they'll probably take it a bit more serious than we did. But the last time we played them, we were so comfortably better than them. Was that one of the games where the first half we'd, we'd been brilliant against them, and then second half we just kind of coasted? Yeah, yeah. It's one of them again where it's not like the result was. It's not all oh, the result was so easy and stuff, but we just looked comfortably the better side. I mean, it only ended up two one because they got one back late, didn't they? Yeah, I think I. I think I, that's. I think that might be one of the games that I had to leave early. Oh yeah, well that was that one. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, you had to get away, didn't you? But the um, yeah, it was a. Uh, I, I think that we should, because it's not like we're going to throw in the under twenty ones. It'll still be first team squad players. I think that we should still have enough for this. I uh, will do a tweet with the predictions on as I have been doing recently. One because we keep winning, but two because I haven't had a message from. Uh, Connie or Alex, as yet. Lazy uh, For the last two games, we've all four of us gone for wins by the wrong score, so that was easy enough to sort. But uh, what are you going for for this one, Casey? Uh, I'm going to go for a two-nil win. So then I am going to go for a three-one win. And as I said, the, for Connie and Alex, I will put those out later. But yeah, I mean, it's been a really, really good couple of weeks. Can can never argue with those kind of results. No, after a bad run of games, it it's been it's been much needed, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, and and again, I, I, the, I suppose at this point, if you win this game, it keeps a nice little run going. Um, like I don't think. Winning or losing against Plymouth is, is particularly going to make up make or break our season. It's drawing that will ruin things. It's the extra game, the extra <laughs> travel. Um, and honestly, I'd like 
they, they can't dock points, can they? If we if we just refuse to play in the replay, uh, maybe I they, they can. I, I, don't I don't think they can punish you in the league. That seems no, unfair. They can just kick you out. Maybe even kick you out. I mean, like yeah, I know that the, I haven't seen any of it. I know that the twenty ones got beat like seven nil last night by a young PSV? P, young PSV, but obviously they are basically a senior side because they play in the second division of Dutch football. And, yeah. And we had no one other than Sonny Perkins playing. It was a very one-sided thing, but if it goes to a replay, that might be the scene that we send down to Plymouth. <sighs> and then Harry Christie will play and Alex will be technically right with his long shot prediction. <laughs> Even though he might have said league game, I think I'd give him it. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it'll be. Uh, it, it, to be honest, even for the sake of your ankles, it'll be good to have a, a, a relatively uh, relaxed game. Yeah, I'll right. tell you what. I was crippled coming out at Norwich game. <laughs> I'd been driving my feet into the ground so much with the stress of it that by the time I got up, my ankle was killing me. Um, I'm surprised there's not like the imprints of a couple of uh, Nike ticks in, in the ground from where you've sat for these last few years. Yeah. Just pushing your feet into the ground that much. Could put a little plaque there. Yeah. Well, that will do as I reckon we've got us predicting them both fairly confident. Um, I guess there's only one small thing to add, which is Kersey was winning the Royal Rumble. Uh... I uh, hilariously, it's gonna be anyone but Cody Rhodes, um, who will never finish his story. It'll be like an unwritten book. Uh, I think it's CM Punk. Cool. Well, I'll say Cody Rhodes. Uh, so yeah, that'll do us for this that. man. No, he's back. No, he's really not. And that's. I mean, we all new, knew... and he's got a new hat. We all knew he was a bad person. Turns out he's an even worse person. He's a really anyway, bad person. Anyway, that will do us for episode 248 of Mighty White's podcast. Hopefully we can get through in the cup nice and stress-free and get maybe even another home draw. Miracle of miracles. So I've been wow. Jack. See you. I've been Casey. Have a good one.